Hi there, bonjour, good afternoon. Welcome to Paris. This is the Notre Dame Cathedral. Groundbreaking on the construction began in 1163. It was constructed over the 12th and 13th centuries. Considered one of the uh, finest examples of Gothic architecture and a symbol of Paris and of France. On April 15th, 2019, a fire broke out and badly damaged the cathedral. So it is now closed and being renovated. It is expected to be completed by April 15th, 2024, in another uh, two years. So, I'm Gabriel Morris. Welcome to my channel, Gabriel Traveler. Today, I'm going to give a honest review and do my best to give a tour of Paris, although that is a monumental task. It will not be complete by any stretch of the imagination. So my uh, video yesterday ended here at the Notre Dame Cathedral. It was an unedited video walking from the Pantheon, a 27 minute long video, and so it is a 20-something minute long walk there. I was kind of doing a roundabout route, but uh, I decided that uh, I would start this video by showing some of the places I showed in that video. I didn't do any talking, so I didn't explain anything. And so I thought that I would show a few of those sites and talk a bit about them. And then continue on from here and show much more of incredible Paris. Another perspective of the Notre Dame from a lovely little park and a not so lovely statue. Not sure what it is depicting here, but uh, 
very strange, interesting, dark themed images of people who I can't really tell if they're in love or in hate or in sickness or what. And here we have a Greek Catholic church constructed in the 13th century, around the same time as the Notre Dame. So I have a mission before I head for the Pantheon. Let's see if the mission can be completed. I'll explain what it is. Either way it goes, we'll see. Saint Julien de Pauve. Eglise Church, Greece, Greek Catholic. So yesterday I walked along that uh, church there, but going this way for now. So mission not accomplished. You can see there, Holland, bike tours and rentals. There it's supposed to be right there. My phone is a little bit confused right now. I am on this street here, Rue Lagrange, you can see. Rue Lagrange or Lagrange and no bicycle rental shop. It seems to be indicating right there. So perhaps there was one there before. So it looks like I might be walking today, which is not a bad thing. Now I uh, tried to find another rental place for bicycles earlier, closer to my hotel. I plugged in bicycle rental into Google Maps and it showed something very close by. I walked over there, but it was not a bicycle rental shop. It was the City Bicycles, which you see all over Paris. And so I tried to uh, figure out how to rent them using my uh, QR lens on the QR code and it was all in French so I gave up. But uh, there are bicycles to rent either the city bikes or bicycle rental shops but mostly what was coming up was the city bikes so good luck figuring it out. You are here. There is the Louvre Museum the Seine or Seine River, the Notre Dame Cathedral. I'm going to walk over to the Pantheon, right there, a six minute walk. And there I will begin my review of the city of Paris. There you go, the Pantheon. It's a bit of a shame that the weather is not cooperating today for filming. Yesterday it was brilliantly sunny. But it is winter, February 10th, all considering it is not too bad, it could be colder. Here you can see the city bicycles.
So pantheon is a Greek word meaning a temple to all of the many gods. The pantheon here was constructed in the late 18th century. The pantheon was originally built as a church dedicated to Genevieve, the patron saint of Paris. And they decided to instead turn it into a mausoleum, housing the remains of distinguished French citizens. So Victor Hugo is entombed here, author of Les Miserables and The Hunchback of Notre Dame. I read Les Miserables in 1990 when I was traveling in Europe, including when I was in Paris here. Absolutely incredible book. Highly recommend it. The rain is coming down. If you saw the video from yesterday, then you will have noticed that there were many people gathered here, sitting, eating in the square. A, a little tip, what not to do. Do not eat on the other side of that fence. I made that mistake. I bought some quiche in a uh, shop over there and then saw all the people eating and walked in and was eating on the uh, stairs there. And a security guard came out and said, you can't eat here. So you can eat your quiche right out in front though. And so uh, my review of Paris as I continue this tour in the rain. Paris is almost inarguably the greatest city in the world. There's just no comparison even compared to the other greatest cities of Rome and London. Absolutely incredible places to explore, filled with history and art and culture. And yet, this being my fifth time to Paris, there is just so much to see, and it is not a city of attractions. Of course, there are many, many attractions. But it is not a place where, in order to experience its greatness, then you have to go to this site and this site and this tourist place. You can just walk the streets and it is endlessly fascinating, more than you can possibly explore in a lifetime or three. Each block just has these quaint shops and lovely restaurants and then of course the grandeur of the real monuments of the Notre Dame and the Louvre and the Arc de Triomphe of course the Eiffel Tower it is a city of the quaint, the detail of the small neighborhoods and also of the largeness, the grandeur, the vastness of just how much there is to see here. It is a intimidating city in various ways in terms of just trying to experience it, capture it, get the feel of it. In the course of a visit here, if it is a brief visit of a few days or even a week. And it is also so very French that as a non-French and non-French speaking person, it can be challenging to explore and try to experience without speaking the language. When I went to buy the tickets for the Metro, I walked up to the uh, attendant by the entrance into the Metro station there and said to him, Bonjour, parlez-vous anglais? So, hello, do you speak English? And he said, no, French. Now, that will not be the case everywhere you go. Many people do speak English. Where I bought the quiche, then I went in and said bonjour and pointed at the uh, quiche that I wanted and she picked up that I don't speak French and started speaking English and she spoke it very well. Same at my hotel. 
and of course the info desks etc the president of France Emmanuel Macron So the ticket for the Pantheon was 11.50 euros. That's about $13 or so. And then I mentioned trying to buy a ticket at the Metro there. I ended up buying six tickets for 11.40 euros for all six tickets. So about $2 each for the Metro ticket. My room, which I showed at the beginning, is definitely one of the best deals in Paris. Pretty much the cheapest place that I could find on booking.com when looking at hotels before coming that was also quite nice, clean, quiet, very small. But as I showed at the very beginning there, 200 euros is what it showed on the door, that would be like 230 something dollars. But it is winter, and so I got the low season price much more reasonable. So it looks like we're coming up upon the River Seine. Let's see where we ended up. I'm looking for a bridge. A bridge of importance to the city of Paris and also to me personally. I will explain why. I'm sure some of you know. Okay, that is not it there. I think it might be a little ways that way. Here it is. Quite a sight. I think that that is the Louvre right there. You can see downtown Paris down there. Can't see the Eiffel Tower yet. We will definitely see it in the course of this video. So the bridge I'm looking for is the next one up this way. Everywhere you go, just monumental buildings. Looks like a basilica. Also, everywhere you go, there seem to be sirens. Wow, what a... This incredible building, the Institut de France. So there's the bridge. Going over a little island right there. Speaking of Victor Hugo, to the best of my recollection, I finished the book right there. Towards the end of my trip, in 1990, almost four months of traveling around Europe. And so during that trip to Europe 32 years ago, then I believe that I passed through Paris three different times. I might have even bought the book Les Miserables by Victor Hugo here in Paris the first time it is a massive book, and so it took me a couple of months to read. And then, to the best of my recollection, then it was on my last, my third stop through Paris, that I finished the book, reading it, sitting on one of these benches, most likely. It was the end of my almost four month trip. I was just about flat broke. I couldn't afford a hotel. I think that I looked at hostels and there was nothing available and obviously I did not look on the internet 32 years ago but uh, I went to like a tourist information office and I think that like everything was full up because it was August and I couldn't afford much anyway 
And so I decided to sleep out on the streets of Paris. That was the second time that I did that. It worked out the first time, maybe a month or two earlier. I won't get lost in telling the whole story here now, but uh, I might make another video going into more detail. But basically I didn't know where I was gonna sleep for the night. And I guess that I just came down here, read my book. I was thinking of sleeping in the park here. And then I thought, well, maybe it would be safer to sleep up there because it is more exposed to the public, sort of, in the middle of the night. I thought, well, down here in the dark of a park, maybe that's somewhere that I could have more problems, somewhere that it was, you know, more visible to passers-by or whatever might be better. And I'll tell you what happened next. And so I decided to sleep here, next to this statue. Specifically, right here, along this edge. I had a sleeping bag and a tent. I didn't set up the tent. I had a camping mattress. I laid down the camping mattress and my sleeping bag and slept there using my day pack as a pillow. I tied my backpack to the fence with the straps of the backpack, thinking that that would be sort of a security measure. Unfortunately, that did not work. I woke up in the morning, my backpack was gone. Stolen by a thief in the night. Very luckily, then I was using my day pack as a pillow. That was where my passport was, the last of my remaining few dollars, my flight ticket, my camera, all of the essentials to get me back home. A week or so later, I had a flight out of London back to San Francisco, but it was still a uh, traumatic experience. I lost two rolls of film that I never developed and would just absolutely love to see how those pictures turned out because I didn't take very many pictures on that trip and lost my tent and clothes and I forget what else not too much of value but of importance to me So I guess the lesson is don't sleep on bridges in Paris, in case you were considering it. Okay, let's get over to the Louvre. So the Louvre is a museum established in the 18th century. It was not originally a museum. It was a fort that became a palace, first established in the 11th and 12th centuries. It became the palace of the kings until it was transferred over to the palace of Versailles, and then it was turned into a museum housing close to 30,000 works of art and history, antiquities, etc. Now, if you've ever wondered, why is the Louvre considered a big deal? Why is it in the Da Vinci Code, for example? Then, this is not the Louvre. This is a Catholic church. Here is the Louvre. A massive, massive building that you can get lost in for days, exploring and witnessing some of the most famous works of art in the world. And it is longer that way than it is wide. Let's walk around to the other side. A classic French restaurant there. Chez Michelin. Crepes, sandwiches. And as you can see, the Louvre continuing down this block. Hey. 
sih? Wow. I don't remember this courtyard. I toured the Louvre in 1990. And I remember being very tired afterwards. Paris is a city where you will walk a lot. You can walk a lot just walking around inside this museum. It looks like the time is correct. 3.20 in the afternoon. most visited museum in the world. I will not be going there today. And so sticking with the title of An Honest Review of Paris, what are some of the downsides, the disadvantages, the risks of uh, visiting Paris? Overall, it is a just amazing, one-of-a-kind experience that if you'd like to travel, you've got to come here. But there are definitely things to be prepared for when you come to Paris. The first is the prices. It is expensive. As I showed my tiny tiny little room there 200 euros it said probably that is the price in July or August for a teeny little room food is not going to be cheap at the uh, restaurants especially the touristy ones you're going to rack up a lot of bills in the course of paying for the Louvre and the Eiffel Tower and various other things to see in the city. Number two thing to be prepared for is theft. As I mentioned, backpack stolen. However, you do not have to be sleeping on a bridge for theft to occur to you. Pickpocketing is quite common. Watch your pockets. Watch out for people trying to get too close to you. Especially in the metro stations, anywhere where crowds congregate. Thirdly, something negative that is associated with Paris are Parisians rude. I haven't found that to be the case. I found people to be quite friendly and helpful, especially as an American who doesn't speak French, then people have been quite patient and understanding overall. Of course, you know, it is a big city. People can be abrupt or not helpful or perhaps even rude, whatever, but overall then I would say that uh, the French people and the Parisians are perfectly nice and friendly people. Especially if you learn a few words of French. 
Look what we got here. Mini Eiffel Towers. And a very tall Eiffel Tower. Again, there's the uh, Louvre. So my French is terrible and virtually non-existent. But I do know a few words and a few words is better than no words. So I can count to ten. Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf, dix. Hello is bonjour, which is actually good day. Bon is good. Jour is day, as in soup de jour, soup of the day. Thank you, merci. Or merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. Au revoir, goodbye. Très bien. Very good. And then something else that can definitely be a major hassle in Paris is going to be the crowds. You aren't really experiencing that in its full force now in winter, but especially in summer, in July and August, and I'm sure even in May or June or September or October, then it is going to be super crowded long lines to get into the Louvre and the Eiffel Tower and any sort of uh, tourist attraction. And so that is one reason why it can be a good thing to visit Europe in the winter. Lower prices, less people. Ponte de Solferino. Ponte means bridge. I forgot to mention the significance of the bridge that I had my backpack stolen at. I think I even forgot to mention the name. The Pont Neuf. So, un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq, six, sept, huit, neuf, dix. And so, that sounds like it must be Ninth Bridge. However, it is actually New Bridge. But, Ironically, the Pont Neuf, the new bridge, is the oldest bridge in Paris. Thus, its significance. A lot of love going on here. I wonder what percentage of them are still together. Luckily, there's room for more. So I'm getting hungry. I'm also cold, I'm tired. It is getting hard for me to talk. Time to find a restaurant. The Concord Bridge. And there you can see the Eiffel Tower poking up. I thought that I was getting kind of close, but it is currently 2.4 kilometers away, about a mile and a half. Which gives you a bit of a hint of how large and how tall it is. Down here looks like a good place to find a restaurant. Looks like we've got a few choices here. Villa Thai. I think I won't go for the Thai food. Cafe, Brasserie, Bar, La Centenaire, or Le Croutement. Whoa, and there it is. <laughs> Ca 
got an orange juice. Nice restaurant here, very cozy.